It was late last night, local time, that the Coast Guard here in Boston confirmed that what they're calling underwater noises had been detected by a Canadian plane over the search zone. What they have announced today is that they believe further noises have been picked up this morning. They are moving the uh, remotely operated vehicles, the ROVs, into that specific uh, search area. Uh, they are going down into the very deep waters of that region but so far they haven't turned up anything of interest and the US Navy experts who are trying to analyse the data uh, associated with these sounds haven't been able to come to any firm conclusions either. So authorities here are stressing that while uh, they are doing everything they can to try to investigate these noises uh, they can't say at this point in time whether they are connected to the missing sub. And I think um, when you're in the middle of a search and rescue case, you always have hope. That's, that's why we're doing what we do. Um, with respect to the noises specifically, we, we don't know what they are, uh, to be frank with you. Um, we, the, the P3 detected noises. That's why they're up there. That's why they're doing what they're doing. That's why they put sonar buoys in the water. Um, the good news is, what I can tell you is, we're searching in the area where the noises were detected. The Coast Guard says that more ships, planes and ROVs are being sent to the search zone and that it's keeping the families of the five people on board the missing sub updated as the search progresses. But there is a very grim countdown of sorts. There are fears that uh, the sub could be less than a day away now from running out of oxygen. Experts argue that there are a variety of factors that could influence how long that supply lasts, that it could uh, last longer than the original estimate of 96 hours. But there are still really big questions as to how long uh, a rescue operation would take if and when the sub is found, uh, and also exactly what that would involve given how deep the waters of this part of the ocean are. Typically, to raise submersibles or objects from the ocean, you would attach these large bags, these kind of almost like balloons, and then you would inflate them. But that's a long, laborious process. You got to bring all that equipment down, compress gas down, and do it. Uh, even hooking a winch to it, a, a wire of some kind, then you're talking about 4,000 meters, almost 13,000 feet of cable. Uh, it, it's just the time issue is really the critical. And I think one of the big issues here is what was Ocean Gate's backup plan? Adding to the complexity of this task is uh, the fact that the Coast Guard says the search zone is expanding every hour. That is because of things like changing ocean currents and weather conditions. So an enormous amount of work is being put into this operation by uh, a number of different countries. Uh, but at this point in time, it appears that they could have uh, still an enormous job ahead of them.